So, this is a book. An alien book. And I read it. And now I'm going to tell you about it. Because why not? I mean, you're here, I'm here, might as well, right? Today we'll be reviewing Alien Invasion, The Rage War 2. That's number two in the Rage War trilogy, with Rage War 1 being Predator Incursion. Go watch that review first by clicking here if you haven't already. And please, if you're watching our videos and you're not already subscribed, just click the subscribe button. It makes us feel better, and plus it helps us out in understanding, tracking certain things, analytics, things like that. And also, if you're listening to our podcast on iTunes, please rate it. I mean, you don't have to write a review, but at least if you rate it, we can get an idea of how many people are subscribing through iTunes. Also, when you rate us, it makes us more visible on iTunes so people can find us that don't know about us yet. So again, there aren't going to be any spoilers in this review. But I'm going to talk about the plot from the previous book a bit, and it might be a little spoilerish for that one. Well, the first big thing to discuss is, is this book better than the first? If you did read or watch my previous review, you'd know I wasn't in love with it. But for this one, I can say for sure, yes, this is a much better book. It still falters in the exact same area as the first did, but not nearly as much. So it has some of its own issues, but I can overlook them because this book here delivers some fucking action and some really good tension, which is also important for an alien story. First, I want to talk about the things I didn't like before ending on a higher note with the things I did. In the previous book, I complained about too much character hopping and having to follow too many locations, timelines, characters, etc. In Invasion, we have the same type of structure, but at least it's been cut down to only three main groups of characters. Much easier to follow. Also, unfortunately, this book is still ending chapters on cliffhangers, only to not go back to those characters for a lot of pages. Just like in Incursion, it makes me forget what was happening in that cliffhanger. If you're going to switch between groups of people, end it on a breather where nothing major is about to happen. I've already bought the book, you don't have to try and rope me in to keep reading like it's a TV show that's on a weekly basis. Another thing I don't care about is spending 30 pages of a 300 page book on characters who have no bearing on the story. Literally, we spend 10% of the book introducing characters and their backstory and motivations only to kill them off immediately. I get that the author was trying to show the cunning tactics and ruthless efficiency of the rage, the crazy fundamentalist from Incursion, but you could do it without faking me into thinking these new characters are going to fold into the main plot. And don't get me wrong, I'm not opposed to a long-ass story with huge backstories of characters. I like reading Stephen King, and we've read Dark Tower and loved it, all 5,000 plus pages of sometimes nonsense, but when you're on a short budget of only 311 pages, you don't have time to waste. Don't be doom a key. That's a thousand plus pages of nothing. It's a thousand pages of nothing that I enjoyed, but I can never recommend. You may also remember my previous review about repeating tropes. You know, the George Bush joke thing? Well, those 30 pages I just talked about with Star Trek red shirts, that was following three different groups of people who all died without a second thought. Three separate locations across space that didn't matter in the grand scheme of things. It could have just been one, and that would have moved the book along at a better pace. And here's a weird little thing. We had a little discussion, which you can weigh in on as well in the comments. Can a xenomorph survive in space? Now, from the first Alien movie, through the comics, and yes, even other books, it kind of feels like, yeah, they absolutely can. And we felt that was sort of well-known and canon at this point. But there's a scene in this book where they have xenomorphs jumping between ships in space like some old-school pirates. But they're wearing breathing apparatuses. Sigh. Apparatus apparatuses, like scuba gear type shit. And I kind of just went, what the fuck? Whatever, moving on. So yeah, I still can't get past the structure in these books. It makes it hard on the reader to really be able to comprehend what's going on. I mean, as another example, we have two different groups of Marines, both boarding derelict spacecrafts that have been damaged and are just floating in space. Both of them escorting a female non-Marine character, both running into large areas of impregnated human hosts, both in a zero-G environment with nothing but their shoulder lights for illumination, and I'm supposed to remember which one was going under the floor, or which landed their ship in the hangar, or which one went in the elevator shaft after I read 30 pages of plot focusing on neither of those groups before coming back to one of them. It just gets a bit confusing trying to follow the specifics is all. And I don't understand how sometimes they're running but they're in zero gravity, but then they're floating down stairwells, but then they're tripping and falling somehow in zero G, but then they're flying around the next moment. Yes, they have magnetized boots, but they seem to switch back and forth between feet on the ground and flying through open space so often, it makes no sense why they wouldn't just float through an air vent rather than crawl. 
Sometimes it's difficult to portray things properly in words, or a movie gives you visuals to handle that. I don't know. Now that I sound like a Debbie Downer who hates this book, let's see what it gets right. Fucking action, yes! We get some cool space battles and land skirmishes and predators fighting xenomorphs fighting marines. Now I don't need a book filled with action to enjoy it. Again, I like Stephen King where you can go 1,000 pages with practically nothing exciting happening. But in an alien or predator story, you gotta deliver some serious, heart-pounding, edge-of-your-seat, high-tension action. And when I mean action, I don't mean bullets flying, jumping over things, rip-roaring action. It can mean running away from the alien, fearing for your life, hiding underneath the table hoping it doesn't see you. All those things apply. And we get it here. The first book had some good stuff, but this one really hammers it home. Especially when your main plot point is human-controlled xenomorphs being used as an army that also now explode upon death, and spaceships with crazy invisible shields, and nukes, and suicidal androids, that action has to be at the forefront. We're talking about trying to fuck over the entire human race and get back to Earth. Yeah, there's gonna be some action. I also like that the book is able to kill off main characters that I like. Even though I don't want to see people that I like go away, it lets me know that no one's safe, which makes for a better read. The callouts to the movies with little nods like a marine carrying a pump action shotgun or having the walls come alive during a firefight can feel a little too on the nose, but it shows the author knows his stuff and is into it. I like the amount of detail and science regarding subspace travel at multiple light speeds. It's not a Michael Crichton level of detail, but it's cool. The idea that while traveling through drop holes at faster than light speed requires you to be in a cryopod because it'll fuck your brain over if you're awake is interesting. The people who have voluntarily stayed awake through a drop have just gone insane because time stretches like you're in limbo, like an inception. Or the sad soul whose cryopod malfunctioned and so they withered away inside only to be found with scratch marks on the inside of the pod and their fingers worn away to bone because they were trying to get out while in some fucked up dream. It's fun exploring made up sci-fi shit, you know? Not to mention space travel itself and the wonderment it inspires in people. Tim Lemon must really have that space explorer mentality because he has multiple characters who talk very philosophically about expanding the human footprint and doing it for science and a better understanding of the universe. I appreciate that a lot. I oddly enough get choked up watching space shuttle launches sometimes. It's a really cool human thing some of us have. And I would know, I play Kerbal Space Program. There's a cool story mentioned about Wayland yutani having a queen at one point who they tried to genetically modify her offspring to control them, and it went horribly bad. Like, more bad than the other stories mentioned. I want to know more about what happened there. Sounds cool as shit. Okay, I said my piece. I like this book. It feels closer to the older books I read growing up. And I can say it's a big improvement over the first Rage War novel. And really, the third one better fucking rock, because we're set up again to see some big shit go down. Aliens, predators, humans, all at war.